My name is Michele Rosso and today I'm going to talk about dispersion of finite size droplets and solid particles in isotropic turbulence. The objective of our research is the investigation of the four-way coupling effects uh, of finite size uh, deformable liquid droplets uh, on decaying isotropic turbulence by using mm, direct numerical simulation. The motivation is that dispersed liquid gas multiphase flow occur in a wide range of natural phenomena and engineering devices, like, for example, combustion of liquid fuel sprays. One example of application is uh, a jet engine. So you can see in the slide a schematic of a jet engine. Uh, the uh, air enters through an intake and is compressed before reaching a combustion chamber. In the combustion chamber, there is an atomizer that is actually um, uh, spraying uh, the um, uh, fuel that is liquid into a multitude of uh, small droplets of different diameter. Uh, that uh, um, uh, start to evaporize and eventually they are ignited later on, giving uh, birth to the flame. Now, uh, the environment in which all this happens is a turbulent environment, uh, and uh, understanding the physics behind this process uh, is still a goal uh, in the combustion and uh, turbulence like uh, fluid community. So in our research, uh, we are doing uh, the step before the combustion uh, process uh, and analyze how uh, droplets and uh, uh, turbulence uh, uh, environment influence each other. So back in 2010, uh, we, um, like uh, Luci and Ali, perform DNS of uh, particle-laden turbulence. You can see uh, here in the video a cross-section of a small portion of the computational domain. On your right, uh, you can see the dissipation rate of turbulent kinetic energy uh, for uh, plane decaying isotropic turbulence. And on your left, uh, you can see the same plot for the case of particle-laden turbulence. One of the main findings of that research was that the presence of the particle um, increases the dissipation rate of TKE, as you can see from the red spots uh, uh, in front uh, of the uh, particles that don't have a counterpart uh, in the right video. So what we did in this research was, was to uh, take it a step further and see what happens uh, when uh, instead of uh, uh, spherical uh, particles, uh, we have uh, deformable liquid droplets. So this uh, um, uh, work was done by coupling a flow solver with an immersed boundary method. Uh, and we're going to use that uh, to simulate the solid particles. Uh, and, uh, but we're going to adopt, uh, like I will explain in the next uh, slide, uh, a flow solver coupled with a level set method and a gloss full method for the uh, solution of the droplet laden turbulence. But before showing the mathematical models and the numerical method, uh, some consideration of the computational requirements uh, are needed like uh, single phase uh, uh, isotropic turbulence uh, is very demanding uh, to s f d for a numerical simulation. An example is, uh, can be seen like uh, if we have uh, a turbulence with Reynolds lambda of uh, 300, uh, in order to solve the smallest scale, we need uh, at least uh, 2048 cube grid points. And uh, we tried with our code this simulation on Blue Waters. Uh, we ran for 12 hours with more than 60,000 processors uh, to advance the solution for about three large edit turnover times. So uh, when uh, a multi-phase flow is considered instead of uh, a single-phase flow, we estimated that the solution, uh, the same solution would require about double the time. So that uh, explains why for, why for uh, direct numerical simulation of um, of turbulence, uh, particularly multi-phase turbulence, uh, a computational facility like uh, Blue Water is needed. So the mathematical model we used uh, um, to simulate uh, droplet-laden uh, turbulence uh, uh, is based on the continuity equation and the momentum equation, uh, supplied with proper boundary condition, uh, jump condition at the interface. The uh, jump that we prescribe are the density jump uh, and the viscosity jump. Since we are not dealing with a reactive interface, uh, we set the jump of velocity to zero uh, at the interface. And we also uh, um, provide uh, the pressure jump that depends upon the jump in the shear stresses at the interface uh, and the effect of the capillary forces. The effect of the capillary forces depend upon uh, the local curvature k 
and uh, the uh, surface tension coefficient sigma. For the tracking of the interface, we used uh, an accurate conservative level set method by Desjardins and Ali. Uh, this method uh, relies on a phase field function psi that uh, shows uh, a hyperbolic tangent profile and depends upon uh, a <coughs> design distance from the interface and uh, on a smooth parameter epsilon, which uh, uh, determine the thickness of the interface. In all our computation, we choose uh, epsilon to, be, uh, to give us a resolution of the interface uh, from three to four grid spacing. The advection is performed by uh, solving uh, an interface transport equation that is written and discretized in a fully conservative fashion. And uh, since this equation correctly uh, advanced the uh, interface, but uh, uh, disrupt the hyperbolic tangent profile of the phase field function, we are required to solve after the detection step a further equation that is the reinitialization in order to keep the hyperbolic tangent profile uh, um, smooth at all time. So uh, this is again written and discretized in a fully conservative fashion. Crucial for the um, simulation of multi-phase flows uh, is the exact like accurate computation of normals and curvature. In order to do so, we first reconstruct a sign distance function from the phase field function by using a fast whipping method. Then from this phase field, uh, from this uh, sign distance function, we uh, compute the normals uh, by using standard uh, differentiation. And finally, via list square reconstruction, we compute the curvature K. So we are pretty satisfied with this uh, procedure because we are able to obtain uh, uh, a method that is more than first order accurate uh, for the curvature in most of the cases of interest. Uh, unfortunately, for it showed uh, large errors when two or more interfaces are in close proximity. Now, in this presentation, I didn't put the results, but we actually work around already the obstacle. And so we are now able to have a simulation with a uh, uh, convergent curvature everywhere in the domain. So the governing equation have been discretized on a staggered grid uh, by using uh, second order centered finite differencing and uh, a conservative discretization of all the equations uh, involved. The jumps in the viscous uh, uh, term of uh, the Navier-Stokes equation have been treated uh, in a smooth fashion by using a continuum surface force uh, approach while the jump uh, in the pressure term have been uh, uh, treated sharply by using a Gauss fluid method. So the jump condition this way are applied for the pressure directly at the interface. Uh, notice that here we just uh, enforce uh, the pressure jump due to the capillary forces because, uh, uh, like I said, we smoothed out uh, uh, the jumps uh, uh, in the uh, mm, viscous term, so we don't have to account uh, uh, again for the jump uh, in the shear stresses. So just to summarize the uh, solution procedure, um, from uh, one step uh, uh, to the next one, we first uh, solve uh, the interface transport equation. We then uh, use a fast whipping method to compute the sign distance function at the next time level. And from that sign distance function, we obtain the normals and the curvature. And uh, eventually we initialize the phase field function if uh, the hyperbolic tangent profile uh, is uh, too disrupted. Now, while after we have uh, the um, interface at the next position and we have uh, normals and curvature at the, next, uh, at the next time, we are ready to solve the Navier-Stokes equation by using a projection method. We first compute a velocity predictor by ignoring the pressure term and uh, if present anybody forces in the Navier-Stokes. Then, uh, with this velocity predictor, we build uh, a right-hand side for uh, a, a variable coefficient pressure plus an equation. We solve this equation, we obtain the pressure at the next time level, and we use this pressure to correct uh, uh, U star and obtain the velocity at the next time level. It's important to realize that in the last two equations, we have two additional terms if we compare uh, with the standard uh, finite different discretization. These terms are active only around the interface and account for the jump uh, in pressure and derive from the application of the Gauss fluid method. Also, in the pressure term, the density has not been smoothed out but has been computed by using weighted average instead. So the solution of the uh, Poisson uh, variable coefficient Poisson-Poisson equation is uh, the uh, bottleneck. 
First off, because uh, it's non separable since uh, rho uh, va is variable with time, uh, w with space, uh, and also is singular at the interface. Uh, therefore, direct application of FFT is not possible. Also, it's mission critical since it accounts for about 70 80% uh, of the solution time. Now, in, uh, in our simulation, we found out that an efficient way to solve it is by using a conjugate gradient method coupled with a, a geometric multigrid. In many, sim in, many uh, in literature, you find that typically they use uh, um, um, algebraic multigrid, IPRE, or something like that, but we actually f we found that with a, a well tuned geometric multigrid, the solution is actually very cheap and, uh, and sufficiently fast. We didn't build, of course, uh, the conjugate gradient method uh, and the, all the geometric and multigrid infrastructure, but we used uh, the PC library. So our code has been written uh, in object-oriented Fortran, uh, standard 2003 and after, and has been parallelized with uh, MPI. We use uh, currently a 3D domain decomposition. And we are also looking forward to extend the capability of our code by using OpenMP MPI and eventually uh, core race Fortran in the near future. Uh, we also have good scalability up to 32,000 core, uh, and we're looking forward to improve it also past that point. Um, and uh, finally, uh, so the geometric multigrid, multigrid uh, requires uh, a certain amount of local uh, grid points uh, given a certain number of, uh, of levels. Of course, uh, the more levels you use, uh, the faster the solution is. Uh, but this uh, doesn't go well with uh, um, a very large number of processors. Actually, we overcome this difficulty by using a brand new preconditioner that is available in PC, starting from version 3.7. It's called PC Telescope and was developed by Dave May. And uh, we actually help it test it. Uh, and this uh, circumvent the problem of the locality of uh, the uh, geometric multigrid. So, now I can show you some of the results. Like I said at the beginning, we are interested in comparing the dispersion characteristic of uh, uh, spher spherical particle and uh, droplets in isotropic turbulence. Like I said, the method I described so far uh, will be used to simulate the droplets in turbulence, while I didn't describe what we did for the uh, spherical particles in turbulence because that was part of uh, Luce's paper that I briefly introduced at the beginning. And anyway, it's an IBM method coupled with a flow solver. Uh, regardless of the case, we use uh, a cubical domain discretized with 512 grid points per direction. Uh, and uh, we initialize in the isotropic turbulent field with uh, Reynolds Lambda 75. And initially, the droplets uh, have a spherical shape with the same diameter of the particles. The diameter is comparable with the initial Taylor length scale of the turbulence. Also, the density ratio between the dispersed phase and the surrounding uh, phase, and then the carrier flow phase, is kept to 10. And this is more a limitation of uh, the immersed boundary method, since uh, we um, are able to tackle much larger uh, density ratio in the, uh, with our ghost fluid method and uh, level set method coupled with the flow solver. So uh, at first, let's look what happened to the dispersion of solid particles when uh, the volume fraction is increased. So uh, this is well known in literature and it's already been explained. By increasing the volume fraction, the turbulent kinetic energy uh, decay rate increases, uh, uh, decreases, and so, uh, I mean, decreases the decay rate, so the t TKE in time actually decreases, and so does the dispersion. Uh, this has been explained as the effect of the two-way coupling uh, between uh, the surrounding flow and uh, the droplets. What we were surprised to, found was that, uh, to find was that the uh, presence of the droplet uh, has actually the opposite effect. So by increasing the volume fraction, the dispersion increases. And uh, we wanted to try to explain uh, and find out why. Uh, first off, we should realize that in this case, we are dealing with four-way coupling effects because the droplets are allowed to deform, unlike uh, the solid particles. Uh, so we first look at the TKE temporal decay uh, for an increasing volume fraction of uh, uh, droplets. Uh, and we uh, notice that uh, uh, TKE uh, uh, decay actually slows down if the volume fraction is increased. This is consistent with the fact that the dispersion in this in for increasing volume fraction of droplet increases. 
Uh, but then again, it doesn't give an explanation. So in order to look into this matter, we again uh, uh, look at this video, which is a cross-section of the computational domain showing the TKE dissipation rate. As you can see, and as expected, the maximum values of TKE dissipation rate uh, uh, is uh, around uh, the droplet, but compared to the case of the solid particle I showed you at the beginning, is not confined only in front uh, of the uh, particle, but uh, everywhere around the, the droplet. So we uh, figure that uh, the dissipation rate must be larger for this case compared to the case of uh, the solid particles. But another thing uh, uh, is important to notice, a lot of droplets here are wobbling and changing shape. So uh, we, uh, uh, we thought that uh, this change of shape uh, must be uh, related to an increased uh, rotational velocity of the droplets themselves because uh, of uh, the large velocity gradient uh, uh, surrounding the droplet. And in order to verify this, we plot the probability density function of the tangential velocity. So we have here peak values that are one order of magnitude larger than the uh, mean values, and that uh, uh, are responsible for increased uh, uh, rotational velocity compared to the case uh, of uh, solid particles that keep being spherical. We believe that this uh, increased uh, uh, rotational kinetic energy is transferred to the flow uh, and therefore responsible for the slowdown of turbulent kinetic energy in time. To better understand this, we uh, take a look at this uh, uh, fundamental equation for turbulence. So on the right hand side, we have the turbulent kinetic energy decay rate, uh, which is portrayed uh, in this uh, uh, turbulent kinetic energy decay rate, which is portrayed on your uh, right. Then uh, on the right hand side, we, we have the uh, ratio of uh, turbulent kinetic energy dissipation in time, which is showed uh, in the left uh, video, uh, the left plot. And finally, we have a term here, which is uh, due to uh, the effect of the dispersed phase. Now, you can see uh, in the two plots, uh, the black line is the case uh, of uh, isotropic turbulence. In this case, uh, we have uh, uh, psi, with, uh, psi d uh, equal to zero. When uh, the solid particles are actually included uh, uh, in the simulation, we have the red plot and uh, a negative value of uh, this term psi with d that actually enhances the dissipation rate of TKE. Finally, uh, we believe that uh, the increase, uh, like the increase, uh, tr the transfer of energy from the droplet to the surrounding flow is responsible for a value of uh, psi d positive that uh, actually counteract the increased uh, uh, negative value of epsilon, as you can see in the blue plot, uh, and result uh, in a slowdown of turbulent kinetic energy dissipation rate, uh, the blue line here. We also verified that the same happens uh, in uh, uh, the other three directions. So this is the dispersion in x, uh, and this is the dispersion in x, y, and z uh, for both particles and droplets. So we uh, actually realize that uh, what we experiment is not uh, direction sensitive, but it happens uh, whatever the direction we consider. So in conclusion, we compare the dispersion isotropic turbulence of a thousand finite size liquid droplets with that of a thousand finite size solid spherical particles using DNS. Uh, liquid droplets and solid particles have identical size and density ratio. The main finding is that dispersion of the liquid droplets is larger than the dispersion of the solid particles, and we believe this is due to the four-way coupling effects of the droplet that reduce the decay rate of turbulence kinetic energy. More tests are needed uh, in order to examine the range of condition uh, under which the present results apply. And uh, also, uh, the curvature computation has been improved. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we didn't have the time to include the result here. Uh, for droplet in cross proximity, give us, giving us uh, like a method which converges to more than first order, uh, like uh, order of accuracy. <laughs> <coughs>